There's no excuse for how George Floyd was treated by police. None. George Floyd was murdered. There's no excuse for it. Even if you take into consideration that he had a bit of a criminal record in his past, like around 2014, yeah, that's, that's no excuse. Someone could be a serial killer, and if they're cooperating with the police, they shouldn't be treated that way. Okay? George Floyd was cooperating. He was not resisting arrest. At all. The footage clearly shows that. Okay, there's no excuse for how he was treated. And let's be clear. He was treated differently because he was black. You just have to look at people like Dylan Roof, a mass shooter, who was treated very nicely by police and was even taken out for lunch before he went to jail to see that people get treated differently dependent on their race. People just seem to be treating black people like they have less worth. Treating them like, oh, well, they're just an animal. I understand that there are a lot of people that are very angry. People are wanting to take out their frustrations on something. People are fully in their right to protest. And you know, I could even understand if people were just vandalizing police cars or police stations or places that actually have some sort of authority, that would make some sense. But when they're going out and looting Target, they're destroying small businesses, they're setting AutoZone on fire, you know, where it's just full-on riots with no rhyme or reason to any of it, yeah, that doesn't help anything. It's certainly not going to stop racists from being racist. It's not going to make racists think twice about really anything. With some racists, it's going to make them feel even more strongly about their racist positions. There is one thing that it does do, though. It gets the subject talked about more. It gets people to think that, well, if we don't want this kind of thing to happen again, we need to nip this problem in the bud. And not just arrest and convict the people who were at fault of this particular incident, but to actually look into problems, systemic problems that are in the system. How will we ever address these problems in the system? When we're doing it on a case-by-case -case basis, how are these systemic issues going to be resolved? Well, they're not. So I'll give these riots one thing. It gets the subject talked about more, and more seriously. I think Killer Mike said it best, and I'm going to end this video with his speech. I didn't want to come, and I don't want to be here. I'm the son of an Atlanta City police officer. Uh, <clears throat> my cousin is an Atlanta City police officer, and my other cousin, East Point police officer. And I got a lot of love and respect for police officers down to the original eight police officers in Atlanta that even after becoming police had to dress in a YMCA because white officers didn't want to get dressed with niggers. And here we are 80 years later. I watched a white officer assassinate a black man. And I know that tore your heart out. And I know it's crippling. And I have nothing positive to say in this moment because I don't want to be here. But I'm responsible to be here because it wasn't just Dr. King and people dressed nicely who marched and protested to progress this city and so many other cities. It was people like my grandmother, people like my aunts and uncles who were members of SCLC and NAACP, and in particular, Reverend James Orange, Mrs. Alice Johnson, and Reverend Love, who we just lost last year. So I'm duty bound to be here to simply say that it is your duty not to burn your own house down for anger with an enemy. It is your duty to fortify your own house so that you may be a house of refuge 
in times of organization. And now is the time to plot, plan, strategize, organize, and mobilize. It is time to beat up prosecutors you don't like at the voting booth. It is time to hold mayoral offices accountable, chiefs and deputy chiefs. Atlanta is not perfect, but we're a lot better than we ever were, and we're a lot better than cities are. I'm mad as hell. I woke up wanting to see the world burn down yesterday because I'm tired of seeing black men die. He casually put his knee on a human being's neck for nine minutes as he died like a zebra in the clutch of a lion's jaw. And we watch it like murder porn over and over again. So that's why children are burning to the ground. They don't know what else to do. And it is the responsibility of us to make this better right now. We don't want to see one officer charged. We want to see four officers prosecuted and sentenced. We don't want to see targets burning. We want to see the system that sets up for systemic racism burnt to the ground. And as I sit here in Georgia, home of Stevens, Georgia, former vice president of the Confederacy, white man said that law, fundamental law stated that whites were naturally the superior race. And the Confederacy was built on a cornerstone. It's called a cornerstone speech. Look it up. The cornerstone speech that blacks would always be subordinate. That officer believed that speech because he killed that man like an animal. In this city, officers have done horrendous things and they have been prosecuted. This city's cut different. In this city, you can find over 50 restaurants owned by black women. I didn't say minority and I didn't say women of color. So after you burn down your own home, what do you have left but char and ash? CNN, Ted did a great thing. I love CNN, I love Cartoon Network, but I'd like to say to CNN right now, karma's a mother. Stop feeding fear and anger every day. Stop making people feel so fearful, give them hope. I'm glad they only took down a sign and defaced a building and they're not killing human beings like that policeman did. I'm glad that they only destroyed some brick and mortar and they didn't rip a father from a son. They didn't rip a, fa a son from a mother like the policeman did. When a man yells for his mother in duress and pain and she's dead, he is essentially yelling, please, God, don't let it happen to me. And we watch that. So my question for us on the other side of this camera is after it burns, will we be left with charred or will we rise like a phoenix out of the ashes that Atlanta has always done? Will we use this as a moment to say that we will not do what other cities have done and in fact we will get better than we've been? We got good enough to destroy cash bonds. You don't have to worry about going to jail for some petty. We got smart enough to decriminalize marijuana. How smart are we going to be in the next 15 or 20 years to keep us ahead of this curve? So that much like when South Africa suffered apartheid, you had Andy and other politicians that could make sure that Atlanta said, Coca-Cola, we love you. But if you don't pull out of South Africa, we're going to leave. We're not going to drink Coca-Cola anymore. Coca-Cola jumped on their side and apartheid ended. So we have an opportunity now because I'm mad. I don't have any good advice. But what I can tell you is that if you sit in your homes tonight, instead of burning your home to the ground. You will have time to properly plot, plan, strategize, and organize, and mobilize in an effective way. And two of the most effective ways is first taking your butt to the computer and making sure you fill out your census so that people know who you are and where you are. The next thing is making sure you exercise your political bully power and going to local elections and beating up the politicians that you don't like. You got a prosecutor sent your partner to jail and you know it was bullshit, put a new prosecutor in there. Now's your election to do it. You want a different senator that's more progressive that pulls marijuana through? Now is the time to do that. But it is not time to burn down your own home. I love and I respect you. I hate I don't have more to say. I hate I can't fix it in a snap. I hate Atlanta's not perfect for as good as we are. But we have to be better than this moment. We have to be better than burning down our own homes. Because if we lose Atlanta, what else we got? 
We lose an ability to plot, to plan, to strategize, to organize, and to properly mobilize. I want you to go home. I want you to talk to 10 of your friends. I want you guys to come up with real solutions. I would like for the Atlanta City Police Department to bring back the Community Review Board, one that Alice Johnson was formerly under, under Chief Turner. We need a review board here ahead of it before an officer does some stupid shit. We need to get ahead of it. That's my recommendation to my mayor and my chief. Let's get a review board, let's get ahead of it, and let's give them power. We don't need an officer that makes a mistake once, twice, three times, and finally he kills a boy on national TV, and the next thing you know, the country is burning down. We don't need a dumbass president repeating what segregationists said. When you start looting, we start shooting. But the problem is some officers black and some people are gonna shoot back. And that's not good for our community either. I love and respect you all. I hope that we find a way out of it because I don't have the answers, but I do know we must plot, we must plan, we must strategize, organize, and mobilize. Thank you for allowing me some time to speak. I'd like to appreciate our chief for what she said on YouTube. I thought it was very bold to do. I'd like to appreciate our mayor for talking to us like a black mama and telling us to take our ass at home. And I'd like to, talk, like to thank my friend for convincing me to come here. And I'll defer to Joe Beasley now because he knows a hell of a lot more than we do. Thank y'all. <laughs>